Hello everyone. Welcome to Codex Tech. Uh, That's a new name for my old RevGD channel. Uh, in today's video, I will go over my MacBook M1 Max setup for Rust development. I hope it will be helpful for some of you that are trying to set up Rust environment uh, on an ARM-based MacBook laptop. Uh, so first thing we will start with is setting up the homebrew uh, um, So let's go with it Okay, so for the uh, homebrew we will run the shell script um, it will It will pull all the dependencies and the homebrew uh, actual installation from the internet since we are running on a fresh MacBook, so it will also install some Xcode tools um, which it has just started uh, it will take a little bit so i will pause the video and come back uh, once the installation is done okay homebrew installation just finished um, and for the next step we steps we see uh, there are two commands that we have to run uh, one will add the path to the z profile uh, this is the first one and other one is for the eval that will um, allow to run the brew command so i will copy this first command paste it in the terminal run it and um, now i will copy the second uh, command uh, if i can copy it properly okay there we go and um, i will paste it and run it as well this will complete the homebrew installation Okay, so after homebrew installation, uh, we will install the most important tool, git, that we will need for uh, our next steps and for our development. So run brew install git and um, let it run. It should not take long. This should be pretty quick. Um, so let's give it a second. Okay, it is done. So git is installed now just to quickly verify that git is still working yeah git help and it does return data so that completes completes the git installation step okay. next we will install some fonts um, this is of course an optional step but I like uh, nerd fonts and ligature so uh, I'll tap on the homebrew cask fonts uh, you can find this command on the nerd fonts uh, website so once we add uh, this cask fonts to brew we can um, actually search for fonts so for instance brew search jet brains so let's say i'm interested in font jet brains mono nerd font so i can um, just do the brew install cask and then the font name and um, let it run the command it will it will download the font from this github repository uh, nerd fonts as you can see it should not take too long um, so I will let it run and uh, once it is done downloading the font then I will come back I'll pause the video here okay so this font is successfully installed so next I want to uh, install Fira Coda Nerd font. Uh, I usually prefer to use this font. So this one is installed. Um, another font that I have been using recently is this Cascadia Cove Nerd font. Uh, so this one I will quickly install. And the last font is, um, it's a narrow font font I sometimes use it depending on the screen resolution so I will just install it as well uh, so this is the last font and that should complete all the font installation uh, before we move to the next step next we will install um, some terminals I prefer kitty and western so I will install kitty first this brew install cast kitty uh, you can find this command on the uh, on the Kitty terminal website. So I will let it run. It will take a few seconds. So um, once the installation is finished, then I'll come back. Okay, Kitty is installed successfully. Next, uh, I will run this brew tab. 
West term from the West term uh, website to add it to the brew and then just run the brew uh, install cask uh, West term command um, and uh, this will install West term uh, terminal return in Rust so I usually prefer this um, over Kitty so that is installed as well in the next step I will install some utility that I uh, like to use so first is the uh, brew install bat so this is a cat replacement uh, it just makes the output pretty so I install that one and uh, after that of oh yeah of course NeoVim <laughs> that's the IDE um, the text editor I will be using so um, I will just run the brew install uh, new way uh, let it run I don't think it will take too long so uh, let let it finish I will not pass pause the video okay so that one is done next um, I will install the exa it's, it is a rust application or utility that replaces the ls command and um, next i will install a starship prompt uh, so that is just to make this zsh prompt look nicer um, i just prefer using this one over all my zsh or other options like a starship uh, actually spaceship so a starship is written in rust so that one is installed and last the, the important tool rust analyzer so this will give us option to um, run this um, tool from neovim uh, this language lsp language service protocol so this is installed as well and we'll move to the next step now we will install some more rust related tools so after rust analyzer we of course need the rust uh, compiler so we rust up uh, we are using that one with the default installation it will take care of installing the rust compiler and the cargo uh, cargo is uh, kind of like a npm package manager kind of thing for rust uh, so that installation is done we can quickly test if uh, compiler and cargo they are working fine Okay, Rust C did not work. Cargo. Oh, okay. So I forgot to run this source command that is just mentioned after the installation. So I will copy this one so it will add um, this path to the uh, ZSH uh, in the current shell. And now Cargo and um, Rust compiler, they both are working uh, fine. Uh, next, I will install another little utility uh, that just makes um, development a little bit easier cargo watch uh, what it will do is that instead of stopping and running application every time you make a change uh, if you run it with the cargo watch uh, then uh, as soon as you modify a file it will just refresh the results or rerun your application uh, so that installation is finished and uh, next I will just run this rust up target add is for the wasm so I will be doing some WebAssembly development so we need to add this target to uh, make it work and uh, we also need another tool uh, for the WebAssembly this is the trunk cargo install trunk uh, that is kind of like uh, npm run command so we can run um, our WebAssembly projects uh, using trunk and it will uh, run sort of a web server that we can uh, load in our, our web, web browser this will take a little bit time so I will pause the video and come back once the installation is done okay so trunk has been installed successfully we will move on to um, to the next step next i will install lunar vim uh, if you haven't checked it out uh, you should go to the lunar vim url um, uh, i will not install any node just dependencies or python but i will install rust dependencies here um, i i prefer lunar vim at least right now i have worked on creating my own configs 
before uh, a neo pim before but i i have just find uh, it being easier to use lunar pim where most of the plugins and everything else is already set up and uh, so far for my rust development it has been working fine for me so i i, I decided not to roll up my own config and just maintain it so i will let it run it will take some time so i will come back once the installation is um, done okay lunar vim is successfully installed uh, so we'll move to the next step uh, for vim before setting up uh, neo vim plugins uh, this is how the west term currently looks so i will copy um, some of my dot files i'm not including uh, all those details in this video but if anyone is, anyone is interested i don't mind sharing those dot files on my uh, gitlab so this is how it looks i will copy those dot files and um, let's see how how it will look after after that okay after i copied my custom dot files this is how the west term is looking if i run the ls command it actually runs the exa command it's colorful uh, output with the icons for directories and files um, and it's a uh, starship prompt is also customized so first it shows the current directory and um, user name if i go inside one of the rust projects uh, which are stored in gitlab so it will also show the uh, git branch branch like main and if there were any changes um, besides that if i go to a rust project it shows the rust current version 1.6.2 uh, that is used for the cli task manager project uh, so that that is how the custom western now looks Oh, and also have customized these tabs. So on the top, you will see uh, the Western tabs that looks even cleaner and nicer. Uh, next, uh, we will run the NeoVim uh, first time. So let me just run the NeoVim. It will just sync up uh, some of the plugins, and um, and let's see if uh, if it works fine. So I will let it run right now and um, then I will run the uh, packer sync command. I believe that one was mentioned once the lunar vim installation had finished, so I will run that one next. Okay, so I will hit the space bar, that's the leader key, then click on uh, L and then S for sync. It will run the packer sync um, once it is done and okay to remove yes no, yeah so yes and it seems to have finished so I will quit from here and reload the neo vim it seems to be still breaking so I think instead of packer sync i will just run the packer update and update all of the plugins so i will quit here and um, try again for that okay i will launch neo vim again uh, vi is the alias for neo vim run the packer update and let it update all of them exit out um perhaps let's try to open neo vim with one of the rust projects and seems to be working fine i don't see any errors let's try to see if the lsp um, is showing the showing the snippets yep lsp print ln i can see it's working so that that means we are all good with the neo vim setup next i wanted to show the kitty terminal so it is using the starship um, prompt so it looks pretty similar to western the color scheme is a little bit different it is still using the um, exa tool for uh, listing all the files and uh, so i will try to copy my um, kitty config 
but before that let's see how the tabs look so at the bottom you can see two tabs are open this is the default look and um, yeah so I will modify the config and we'll see how it looks and that's how kitty looks after I copied my config there is a transparency in the background um, and this is how the tabs look so one and two there are two tabs open it shows the current folder if I go inside a folder it will uh, reflect at the bottom for the in the tab header um, oops uh, I think I, I, sh I should quit the new vim and op go inside one of the project folders and yeah so let's go to the Let's see what, okay so I can open the quiz game so let's open in the new game it loads fine so yeah that's it that was a quick video of uh, rust development environment setup on my MacBook M1 Max MacBook Pro thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one